what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Jake, uh, so yeah, you stopped Mizzou two out of six times. Yeah. In that second half last week. It's a 66% stop rate, boys. Hell yeah. If you could somehow maintain that, that would rank about middle of the pack. I think that puts you like in the 50s or 60s in terms of stop rate. Of course, right now you're 128. Right. So that would be the that would be the improvement, you know, the B average thing that we've been saying, and then see how good you could actually be. Um, and this would feel like a game to maybe operate at a 66% stop rate. Like, there's no excuse why Auburn's offense should score at a higher clip than that. Like, like allowing and doing all of the curving and everything that we've been talking about, like, 33%, sure, maybe they pull that off. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Jake, let's get into some of these. um... Okay, let's get into a couple of things. Uh, I want you to interpret a couple of things. Uh, I want to talk coverages, but then I also want to talk about you were just uh, mentioning how often Auburn brings pressure and how do you think it affects the game? Yeah, so their defense coordinator is Ron Roberts. A lot of Louisiana football fans will remember that name, know that name. He was the head coach at Southeastern from 2012 to 2017. He was also the defensive coordinator there at Louisiana Lafayette from 18 to 19. So he has a footprint here in Louisiana, goes over to Baylor with Dave Aranda for a couple of years. And now he is back in the SEC here at Auburn. And he is somebody that when you look at what he wants to do, like he's going to be out of nickel. They're nickel 87.2% of the time. Now, huh. two different versions of nickel. There'll be a 4-2-5 and a 3-3-5. And so they'll give you some different looks. It's not just lining up and, and running the same nickel package. I like package. the interior guys on the four, uh, the four down as well. What are the names? It's... Uh, Justin Rogers and Marcus Harris. Marcus Harris, number 50. He's a senior. Justin Rogers is 52. He's a junior. Um, that is the matchup on the interior I was talking about. I, yeah. I, I'm very excited to watch. Is Charles Turner? Charles Turner is probable, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe so. Okay. I'm, I'm very excited to watch Dellinger, Turner, and Miles Frazier against those two guys because I came away pretty impressed, and they both flashed, especially probably 50, Harris flashed a lot against UGA. And when you look at coverages, I mean, a lot like LSU, quarters coverage, 21.3% of the time, cover three, 31.9% of the time. Now they will run cover one and cover two, 11.9 and 10.3% of the time, respectively. So they'll change it up. I mean, they do have a lot of coverages, but they don't just, you know, only star in one or two coverages. They really like to run four different coverages. But the thing, breaking down the defense that stood out to me, They've defended 181 passes this year, mm -hmm. and they have blitzed on 101 of those passes. 56% of the time, yeah. they are blitzing. And so, uh, where is it coming from? Well, 55% of them are box blitz, uh, blitzes, come in between the hashes. Uh, the nickel's going to blitz 26% of the time. Feels like a pretty high number that your slot corner, your nickel, is going to blitz that amount. 6% uh, corner cat, not huge there. Simulated pressure, though where they show like they're going to bring it and back into coverage. That's where you have to be careful, 38% of the time. Yeah, so they blitz a lot and they pretend to blitz a lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're going to bring, I mean, the bring at you least – You should do it if you blitz a lot. They're going to bring at least five, 45% of the time. Damn. They're going to bring at least five guys. So yeah, that, that's a high number. 50% of the time. Uh, six, uh, six man rush, 9% of the time. Seven man rush, seven plus man rush, 2% of the time. So – they're going to be aggressive in what they do as far as trying to get after the quarterback. Now, these coverages, there's some aggression there. It's mostly going to be a deep zone coverage, but they are going to bring extra guys. Even so, when they don't, they're going to try to trick you. It's going to be a guy on the line, drops back into coverage. Jay Daniels has to make sure that he doesn't fall into what happened to Brady Cook last yeah, week. With yeah, Harold Perkins. Perkins, yeah. Which, granted, that is something that LSU had not shown on film up to that point. Uh, Perkins showing and dropping back, specifically carrying that uh, that seam route. At least that's what Kelly said after the game. Um, so Jake, how do you when, when we, okay taking what you know about the LSU offense and looking at the fact that Auburn wants to bring five about half the time, like you just mentioned, 
but then they also want to play a deep zone, so they're not getting beat over the top. Where are the advantages? That's where you got to like try. Where, where do you exploit them? Yeah, I think that's where you have to try to catch them when they are being aggressive. That's where I'd like to see Jaden Daniels stand in there. We know this offensive line can sort through it, pick it up. The running backs have been better about picking up their responsibility, mm -hmm. not patrolling the area because that really got them into trouble earlier in the year. So I think any time, and look, when they're doing it half the time, you're going to be able to catch them. When they're trying to be aggressive, knowing that you have a strength up front to be able to pick it up, yeah. I think that's where you make them pay. But I'm saying, do you, but, but are they still, so like, when they're blitzing, though, are they still accounting for the deep ball and leaving underneath open? Or are you saying that you can beat them over the top when they're trying to add? No, when they blitz, I think that's where you get your 12 to 15 yard not yeah. intermediate. I mean, it's a little bit deeper than that, but that's really where you can make your hay. And that's where LSU really has thrived. I mean, yeah, the deep balls are working for sure. I mean, they're hitting those at a very high clip. But think about how many times you've seen Malik Neighbors over yeah. the middle on a dig route and how wide open it's been. True. That's True. where you're going to be able to attack this Auburn defense as well. Um, okay. So, hmm. We had a lot of debate yesterday over running the ball, right? And whether LSU should be running it more. And certainly against Mizzou, even though that was the top rush defense in the SEC, they said, yes, we are going to run it more. And it paid huge dividends. It allowed the defense to rest. Uh, it controlled the game flow a bit more. Helped establish dominance, took some stuff off of Jaden's plate, just made it easier overall. Do you think you can come out there and run the ball against this defense as well when they're, uh, well, when 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 they're adding guys and they, and they're as good in the line as they are? You have to make sure. So if you go, if you have a team that in, I mean, they do give up over four yards of carry. They do. When you have a team that goes four two five, will throw into that three three five, and they'll kind of do it just whenever. There's no real rhyme or reason. It's just kind of who they are. You know this better than I do. Your offensive line has to know that, and they've got to identify that. And so they have to go into this week identifying, okay, when it is a 3-3-5, when it's a 4-2-5, where's the mic point? Who are we going to? What changes in our responsibility? Because that's, to me, when you're trying to run against multiple fronts like that, that's what you have to make sure that you can do. I think individual matchup, LSU's not going to face a team where they're just going to get knocked off the ball. This yeah, offensive line is too much of a strength. I think this week it's more about identifying who you have when they change fronts. Um, I know for me it's like a fullback. I can't talk offensive line, but if we were going against a team that liked it, they were a three-four defense, but they were kind of a multiple three-four defense, and that one of those three-four outside linebackers would kind of find his way, put his hand on the dirt in the last second, it would turn yeah. last second into a four-man front because that changes my responsibility. And like a three-man front, I'm going to be trying to kick out the outside linebacker on a power run. But yep. if he switches to a four-man front, I've got to go two spots inside. i got to go one pass the mic declared, mic. right? And I'm trying to find and sift through, like, every all that trash right there. So it completely changes my responsibility, and it can happen almost as you snap the ball. Mm. Mm. You either live with it, you live with it, and it's, you know, not your, your best play. Or if you have a veteran group, which LSU does, you change it on the move. Again, if you are going to this game on Saturday, uh, be loud, be insane, be crazy, because I still think that is LSU's greatest advantage here. Like, like, like we said, as, as we do the math of how do we think a game's going to play out, it's not just on the field stuff that matters. It's off the field. It's things like travel. It's things like the tough games that you've been in, et cetera, et cetera, right? And uh, it's, it's where you play, especially in college. Are you playing at home or not? And how's the environment going to be? And when you're talking about Death Valley, you've been away for the first six games. You're finally home. You're going against a, you know, a traditional rival that you hate. It's going to be at 6 p.m. This should be one of the games where Death Valley really hits its zenith, which we rarely see. We get about once, twice a year nowadays. This should be one of those two times and make it hard on Auburn, an offense that isn't the best to begin with. Get a couple, like, if, if, you, if you force a false start penalty... It is um, what the, how am I how am I looking to say this like like a false start is bad for any offense obviously right they're drive killers it's especially bad for an Auburn offense that really does not want to be behind the chains uh, like like in this game if you force a bunch of third and eleven I would be shocked if they man and I know that's saying a lot with this LSU defense but I would be shocked if they were able to consistently convert third and eleven like some of the other opponents this year so 
the crowd can actually have a yeah. massive impact Saturday night. Yeah, I think so as well. I think it's a great point because of not just the quarterback right now and some of Peyton Thorne's struggles, but also the receivers that they have. I, again, the tight end, you got to be careful there. I think he can be a game changer, so you got to have a plan for him. But on the outside, this group is not last week. Last week, you had three dudes yeah. you had to worry about, maybe even – a top three guy in the country in Luther Burton. He's a leading receiver in the country right now, so it's a different matchup. Uh, quickly here, T, William Anthony, can someone explain what a 3-3 nickel defense is? Pretty simple. So a 3-3-5 kind of nickel defense is always going to be up front, you've got an end to tackle and an end. And then in the backers, you've got a Will, a Mike, and a Sam. And then you have five defensive backs. You're going to have two corners, two safeties, and then you'll have a nickel who kind of switches – different size that is your basic like three three five defense well and when you hear nickel all that means is so normally traditionally on defensive we all knew you have your front seven right four linemen three linebackers yeah. four members in the secondary all nickel is is a fifth get it nickel five a fifth uh <laughs> member of the secondary coming yeah. on and one of the linebackers and or linemen um going off the yeah. field and then dime is six yeah, do we know why dime is six um uh, no no, mm. well, just you know, next coin up. You know, like there's no, yeah. there's no six pence right, or anything like just, that. You know, it feels kind of weird. Uh, right? No, it does feel. A little I mean, weird. I know Mario said a dime plus ninety nine. It's a shame you don't even know what you're worth, but I don't understand why dime means six. What is that sentence that you just said? From a song. Thank you. Oh, okay. There you go. Let me love you. Uh, wow, Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys. They're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again. Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.